Hello listeners, and welcome back to Sandman Stories Presents. Today, we have three more stories from the Philippines. These stories come from the Itneg people, from the island of Luzon. You might remember their story of a pony bowl in Ion. Well, this time, we have three more of their stories. First, a short story of the sun and the moon. And then, a second story that tells of when the Itneg learned how to farm. And in the third story, we learn about Magsawi and jars. Okay, let's begin. Story number one, the sun and the moon. Once the sun and the moon quarreled with each other, and the sun said, you are only the moon and not much good. If I did not give you light, you would be no good at all. But the moon answered, You are only the sun, and you are very hot. The women like me better, for when I shine at night, they go outdoors and spin. These words of the moon made the sun so angry that he threw sand in her face. And you can still see the dark spots on the face of the moon. The End Okay, and story number two, how the Itneg learned to plant. In the very old times, the Itneg did not know how to plant and harvest as they do now. For food, they had only the things that grew in the forest and fish from the streams. Neither did they know how to cure people who became ill or were injured by evil spirits, and many died who might have otherwise lived. Then Kadaklan, the great spirit who lives in the sky, saw that the people were often hungry and sick, and he sent one of his servants, Kabonayan, to the earth to teach them many things. And it happened this way. Dayapan, a woman who lived in Kalang, had been sick for seven years. One day, when she went to the spring to bathe, there entered her body a spirit who had rice and sugar cane with him, and he said to her, Dayapan, Take these to your home and plant them in the ground, and after a while they will grow large enough to reap. Then, when they are ripe, build a granary to put the rice in until you shall need it, and a sugar cane press to crush the cane. And when these are finished, make the sayong ceremony, and you will be well." Diapon was filled with wonder at these strange things, but she took the rice and the sugar cane and went home as she was commanded. While she was trying to plant them in the ground, the spirit again entered her body and showed her just what to do. Since then, the Itneg have planted crops every year, and because they do as Kabanayan taught the woman, they have plenty to eat. When Dayapan had reaped the first rice and cane, she began to make the ceremony sayong, and the spirit came again and directed her. And when it was finished and she was cured, he told her to take a dog and a cock and go to bathe in the river as a sign that the ceremony was finished. So she went to the river and tied the dog and the cock near the water. But while she was bathing, the dog ate the cock. Dayapan wept bitterly at this and waited a long time for Kabonayan. And when at last he came, he said, If the dog had not killed the cock, no person would die when you make this ceremony. But this is a sign, and now some will die and some will get well. Diapan called all the people together and told them the things that the spirit had taught her, and they could see she had been made well. After that, when people became ill, they called Diapan to treat them. And it was as the spirit had said, some died and others were made well. The End Okay, and story number three, Magsawi. A great many years ago, some Itneg left their little village in the valley one morning 
and made their way towards the mountains. They were off on a deer hunt, and each carried his spear and axe head, while one held the leash of a string of lean dogs eager for the chase. Partway up the mountainside, the dogs were freed, and the men separated, going different ways in search of game. But before long, the sharp barking of a dog called all in his direction, for they believed that he had a deer at bay. As they approached the spot, however, the object did not look like a deer. And as they drew nearer, they were surprised to find that it was a large jar. Filled with curiosity, they pressed on, but the jar evaded them. Faster and faster they ran, but the object, disappearing at times and then coming into view again, always escaped them. On and on they went, until at last, tired out, they sat down on a wooded hill to rest and to refresh themselves with betel nut, which they took from their brass boxes attached to their belts. As they slowly cut the nuts and wrapped them in the lime and leaf ready for chewing, they talked of nothing but the wonderful jar and the mysterious power it possessed. Then, just as they were about to put the tempting morsels into their mouths, they stopped, startled by a strange soft voice which seemed to be near them. They turned and listened, but could see no person. Find a pig which has no young, said the voice, and take its blood, for then you will be able to catch the jar which your dog pursued. The men knew then that the mysterious jar belonged to a spirit, so they hastened to do as the voice commanded, and when they had secured the blood, the dog again brought the jar at bay. The hunters tried to seize it, but it entered a hole in the ground and disappeared. They followed and found themselves in a dark cave where it was easy to catch the jar, for there was no outlet except by the hole through which they had entered. Though that was many years ago, the jar still lives, and its name is Magsawi. Even now it talks, but some years ago a crack appeared in its side, and since then its language has not been understood by the Itneg. Sometimes Magsawi goes on long journeys alone when he visits his wife, a jar in a locos norte, or his child, a small jar in San Quentin, but he always returns to Domeco on the hillside near the cave. The end. I like the explanation of why the moon has craters on it. Um, that's in a lot of cultures where they explain why the moon looks the way it does. And I like their little petty back and forth. No, I'm better. No, I'm better. In the second story, the origin of farming and herb gathering and learning how to heal stuff, that was, that was interesting. Um, again, I had to keep a straight face when the dog was eating, but I always like to find out how people explain their history, explain how they learn to do stuff through story. And in the third one, I'll have to look into this more. I don't know about this talking jar, magic jar. I'll probably have to message Ethan of the Tabi Tabi Pod because she knows a lot more about Filipino folklore than I do. All right, and today's podcast shout out is to the Efriweto Podcast. That is spelled A F R I. W-E-T-U, and it is the stories of pre-colonial Africa. Some are legends, there is occasional folklore, but most of it is histories of different indigenous empires that existed prior to the imperial invasions from Europe. I've learned about so many different leaders and cultures from a very diverse continent. Seriously, if you're interested in world history, this pod is for you. Wetu, by the way, is a Swahili word for our as the host of the pod is from Africa and wants African voices when telling African history. And I agree. She does a great job with it. And if you like this podcast as much as I do, go and give it a five-star rating on Podchaser or Good Pods or iTunes or now Spotify as well. And the listener shout-out is to the nation of Bhutan, known in their language, Zonka, as Druk Kap, or the Land of the Thunder Dragon. 
It sits snug between Bangladesh and China and is just a hop, skip, and a jump from Nepal. Bhutan goes from lush tropical forests to snow-capped peaks in dramatic fashion. I'm not familiar with the language of Dzongka, so I will do my best here. Kadrin Che La and Simcha Dele. Thank you and good night.